Hello, Miss V at veronicadrake.com. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. I'm doing wonderful. I've got a party going on. Yeah, a party of spirits. <laughs> yeah, party with spirits. Eric's leading the way. He's probably dancing on a table with a lampshade on his head, right? <laughs> so Hi, Eric. Close. I love you. He says, I love you too. And this, and then he does this. Oh, so this uh, must mean that Pope John Paul II, who we are going to uh, talk to, is a party animal, right? <laughs> Eric is cracking up. He goes, leave it to my mom. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. So do you, uh, have you brought him in, Eric? Uh, he is here. Uh, I feel... Uh, I feel like there's a constriction in my throat and Eric's laughing because he's like, you can do this. You can do this. So go ahead. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you, Pope John Paul II, for coming in. Um, you know, we gathered these questions before the Pope Benedict passed away. So maybe you would like to say some words about that first. He says, um, first of all, he says, thank you uh, for allowing me to speak to you. Um, and he says that no matter where we go or what we do, we must keep the faith. And the truth of the matter is there is no ending and the light shall persevere. Oh, that's beautiful. And he said that about Benedict. Also? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, he said the light shall persevere. Wonderful. Was he one of your favorite popes? Or maybe we should do that. Mm -hmm. He said they're all wonderful in different ways. Never mind. Yeah, there are no favorites. Okay, of course not. Um, so the first question from the community, what was your personal relationship to Jesus like for you? That's a really good question. I love it. And and honestly, I can just feel his energy expand, his heart expand mm. that he's saying that there are no words that you could use to compare it to you love your family you love the people yeah. on earth he said but to understand the love of jesus at the depth and the level that i did and still do yeah. he said it's incomparable there aren't even words wow so uh, my great great uncle was cardinal of Spain, Vidal Baraquer. Um, have you met him? Probably not. Just, but he's um, cardinal of Spain. Know, it, it's not about who we meet or how we interact. He said <laughs> it's just a, it's just a, a place and a feeling inside of us that connects us all. So well, we I may not have met him in the way that you all think that you would meet somebody there is a knowing there and and he's also going on to say that there was a camaraderie of sorts just because okay. of the very special missions and blessings that they were here to provide yeah that's cool did you ever personally experience or encounter any dark or negative spirits while you were pope oh always he said can you tell me about one of those experiences um it is not like storybook or not like Hollywood, he said. It is a very heavy sense of despair. When you are experiencing negative energy, as Eric says, let's let's clarify it's negative energy, right? Because there's a whole bunch of words we could use. When you experience this negative energy, it's life sucking and it's not that so much that there's a physical representation of it it's an underlying current and you feel it it's almost like he says um he goes on to say eventually everything negative and heavy bubbles to the top I'll, I'll ask questions and then mute. <laughs> um, what life lessons, uh, um, Pope John Paul, did you agree to learn in your life as Pope John Paul II? Humility. Delegation. Mm -hmm. And 
I came in with a lot of compassion, but I had to learn how to channel the compassion and not get lost in the big picture because of the level of compassion that I have. I sometimes can overlook other details. Interesting. Stop it. Oh, somebody's at the, you know, in the front, not at my door, but they'll pass. Um, okay. Are there any specific experience that you had as the Pope that surprised you that such a reality exists? Like any experiences that you didn't expect to happen to you that caught you off guard when you were Pope? Well, he says, let's start with the obvious. I didn't expect to be shot. He says that as a human, you know, you, you think that you have these certain safeties in place as somebody who's doing what I'm doing and representing what I'm representing. Uh, it never occurred to me that I could be shot. Mm. I could be harmed with words but I didn't ever think I would be shot. I now he goes on to say, I experienced the darkness in a very personal way. Well, why didn't the divine protect you? It's not like that. Mm -hmm. um, Eric also is saying, um, we've learned over time that free will and choices and the reality is that being shot at being you know and and living to go on he's saying to to work through that and to and then to further have compassion and forgiveness for that person my life was all about being a symbol of peace all right so why did that happen what was it for you for the collective was it to build the pump mobile so others would be protected in it, the future, or what? It was. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna cry with this. Um, he's very beautifully spoken, very soft. It was to show the the frailty and the vulnerability of the human. That's to beautiful. see how easily the darkness can penetrate even the holiest of beliefs. Oh. Uh, did it hurt? Or, I mean, how was that experience for you? Of course, there was physical pain, but the emotional pain, the trying to reconcile in my mind how humanity could sink so low. And it's not just my pain or my shooting. I'm, I was a small representative of what happens daily, minute to minute on this planet. I needed to experience that so my compassion could grow greater. Oh, goodness. So did, were you disappointed in humanity? Or did you lose a little bit of faith, at least temporarily, because of that? No, not at all. He you says, my, my, faith, my faith and my belief never wavered. I understood that there were variables at play that I could have no way of knowing it was the person, the experiencer, the person shooting at me had lessons to learn and had a had a part a role to play out in the betterment of society of humanity. Okay, by you redemption did. by forgiveness. I feel that this gave this person a second chance a look at life in a way that normally no one gets the opportunity to have do you think that this created a, a tighter security including the pope mobile that may have saved the lives or at least um uh, prevented others from attacking future popes i believe that when the dark enters we have to look at where the cracks are and we have to see where we can patch the cracks and we have to be mindful of the shortcomings as human. I use this shooting as an analogy for all of humanity, for all of the, the society. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, I was a man in flesh and I was 
shot at and I was harmed, but this is way bigger than me. Okay. Did you have any freedom as, as the Pope or were you, were your decisions controlled? I had immense freedom because I chose in my mind to have freedom. Everyone is accountable, but ultimately we're accountable to the source, to the creator. Mm -hmm. And I lived my life as such. Were there men and humans that tried to control me? Absolutely. Well, Absolutely. I was reading about popes in general and when Benedict died, and I saw that there was like a 12-year-old or a 70-year-old pope. That's how mm -hmm. could somebody so young fill that role? So Eric would like to chime in with this one. Um, Eric is saying even though chronologically this child was of a certain age the soul was prepared for it the soul was ready so if you put an ancient soul inside a 12 year old and the 12 year old withstands the test of can you do this yeah. so be it age is not really relevant okay that makes sense among your duties and responsibilities as the Pope, which one was the most difficult for you and which one was your favorite? Managing the public reputation. Oh, you, you mean your I reputation or the, the reputation of the Catholic Church to the to the public? I, I, he or? says I held the Catholic Church on my shoulders. Oh, yeah. I carried her. Yeah, that was very difficult, he said. But in one sense, on a human level, yes, it was difficult, but on a very um, spiritual level, it was my honor and my privilege to carry her. Yeah. What about your favorite duty or responsibility? Um, I would love being, I would love anything that would have me being an influence to children. Oh. I just loved immersing myself in the, the childlike energy any chance I got. And I also can't... Um, not share this. I loved experiencing different lands and different cultures. That was beyond anything I could have comprehended. Yeah, when I'm Pope, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to immerse myself in children. Yeah. I'm teasing. I will never be Pope. Uh, why did you choose Doc Martens for footwear? That's kind of cool. Yeah. He says they're not typically known as shoes of comfort. Mm. They are more known for style. What? So you it want to have a stylish flair? It was interesting to me that I could find comfort and style in the same shoe. Oh, okay, good. So I don't know anything about Doc Martin. I don't either, but I know my kids beg for them all the time, but they were so expensive. I said, no. Save up your allowance, and they did, and actually got some. Okay, um, did you really, truly believe what you were saying? Is there context to that? Nope. Just did like, you believe in the words you, you oh. gave to the public, I guess? In other words, he says, did I walk my talk? Yes. Yeah. There we go. He says, of course I did. Yeah. Of course I did. And I still stand by what I stand by. Okay. Now, a lot of the Bible has been changed or misinterpreted over time. What do you have to say about that? Because I, So I understand that it's either the Council of Trent or the Council of Nicaea, where Constantinople or somebody took certain things out of the Bible, like reincarnation and uh, mediumship and past lives and all that stuff. Uh, what do you have to say about that, if anything? Everything is a sign of the times. Yeah. Everything is what people are ready for and what people can digest and going back to the beginning of time when the bible was written when pieces of the bible were written there were certain things that certain writers certain authors just didn't feel appropriate and there were let's call them editors okay these were, these were editors and they were they gave they were given full reign to remove what felt embarrassing mm -hmm. to the to the whole to the collective well, it was all done to protect the church yeah well do you believe in mediumship do you believe in uh, in 
uh, multiple incarnations. Eric's Eric's laughing. He's like, we're here. <laughs> well, I know. I just want to make, I want it in paper, on paper. Uh, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't use the word mediumship and I wouldn't use the word reincarnation. However, as a concept, didn't Jesus come back after three days? That's true. Well, that's another question I wanted to ask because we interviewed um, Jesus and we even have an EVP of him saying yes when I ask him if he has reincarnated uh, at any point. But during that interview, he said he didn't really die on the cross, that he um, basically learned to lower from the ascent of some monks or whatever, learn to uh, lower his heart rate and respiratory rate to levels that were like death. And then later on, people ushered him off and he ended up having a, a life in France. And now historians in the last couple of years have found evidence that Jesus really did live a life in France with Mary and had several kids, two or three of which died, etc. So what do you have to say about that? Because I mean, the whole point of Christianity is Jesus died for our sins. So he says, let's take it to a really simple level. Okay. What is death? Yeah. What is death to the human body? Yeah. The heart doesn't circulate. The brain doesn't work. You know, um, so in a sense, he did do all of those things. He did go into this deep hibernation of sorts. Kind of death, yeah. yeah. And um, so, yes, in the technical sense, he was dead. He would have been pronounced dead. Yeah. There was no trickery. There was no, he was dead. And he was miraculously brought back. Yeah, and he did die, that death, or that type of death, he right. did for us. Yeah. Um, so Eric is saying, let's talk about did for us. Yeah. So he did for us in the sense that he is representing us and will continue to do so as an icon. Right. But right. Eric, uh, uh, excuse me, Pope is saying, the Pope is saying that in our church, we understand that unless you accept Jesus Christ, you are not gaining access to the Father. Mm. And the Pope says, I still stand by that. And Eric is saying, we need to figure this out for humanity because there are a lot of people understanding the Catholic Church and they're questioning how this can be. The Pope is very quick to tell me we're turning a corner. The church itself is turning a corner. Mm -hmm. Things will be different. And the Pope is very, was very old school. He's telling me I was very rigid i was very conservative i was very much the book of the church oh, yeah and so it, it really is as we as each phase of humanity evolves and and comes into a to, to a way of life the times are changing everything must change with it or every the what doesn't change dies off but I don't get it, uh, Pope John Paul. I mean, how could somebody not be accepted by God because they don't believe in Jesus Christ? We're all whole and part of God. We're all part of the collective. That does not make any sense to me. Well, it really doesn't. Everybody is part of God. And he's saying that in, in the time, at the time when Christ was crucified, yeah. it was believed that that was the way that it was that belief system never changed and his point is the old will die off okay. so that that belief the catholic church still holds on to and i think excuse me as i may interpret here he's alluding to the fact that the catholic church is behind the times so to speak what do you think now pope john paul 
um he's saying clarify that well what do you believe now do you believe that people cannot be close to the father to god if they don't accept jesus christ because i believe that jesus christ is a way of being okay and the way that you be call it christ-like mm -hmm. is the way that you get close to god wow take away the formalities of it mm -hmm. what is christ-like he says christ-like is kind it's loving it's compassionate it's all of those things what is god all of those things so for the rituals that have you stand up and say the body and blood of christ yeah. If that ultimately brings you comfort and you feel closer to that, that's okay. okay. It's okay. <laughs> so have you met Jesus? If so, tell us what that was like. Um, I met Jesus on earth. Oh. I met Je I knew oh. I knew Jesus very intimately on earth. And so can you, and so can every person. Yeah. Okay. When we talk about meeting people. We only have the human context. Hi, nice to meet you. Shake your hand. Yeah. But when you when you have the the heart that I had, the 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 compassion, the knowing, the belief that I had, I walked with Jesus every single day. Mm. What about after you transitioned? There's the, it. That's the energy that guided yeah. me. Oh. Okay. That was, I had a uh, he he you know, he has a kind of a smirk and he says I ha I had a personal escort. Oh, nice. Now that you have a bigger perspective to, in spirit form, what do you think about Christianity? What what needs to be changed or improved upon, etc., to help the collective move forward toward their highest good, their highest good? Um, inclusion, acceptance expansion in mindset the church becomes the men that make the decisions mm -hmm. the decisions come from the divine however the interpretation isn't always accurate and it is self-serving at times yeah of course there's an agenda yeah you know let's talk about the dark side of, of catholicism i mean you know the, first of all the vatican all that there's so much gold and everything and so much riches and yet there's so many poor outside of the walls of the vatican and all over the world plus there's awful stains in the uh, you know uh, history of Catholicism, like not not to you, but you know, the Spanish Inquisition, the the Crusaders, um, what do you call it? Yeah, the Crusades he and all has, that stuff. He has his head down, and he's he's hanging his head as if to hang it in shame. Those were man made decisions. Yeah, Th those were free will decisions. Yeah. I can only speak for myself. I held the church high on my shoulders. I carried her believing in certain ways of being, in certain literatures that put, were put forward. I didn't necessarily have an agenda except to keep her, he's referring to the church as her, mm -hmm. to keep her in her integrity mm -hmm. as I understood it. Yes, of course. I wasn't surrounded with that. Have you shed some of the fundamental Catholic beliefs there um, now that you're in the afterlife, like abortion, celibacy for Catholic priest, no priesthood for women, any of those? Obviously, I see it through different lenses. Mm -hmm. You might say that I would need to redo this again. Yeah with the knowledge that i will be continuing to learn mm. where i am i do believe we should have compassion and acceptance and and tolerance for all i'm ashamed to say that not all my actions supported that and quite honestly 
you talk about the gold in the Vatican. I had to wrestle with the idea that what she represents is a contradiction yeah. in present day. I can imagine. It's not easy for him to say these things. It's not, and oh, that maybe that's why I feel stuck in my throat. Yeah. He loves her. He loves, he sure. loves this church. Okay. What is your opinion re regarding the thousands of indigenous children who died in residential schools in Canada under the Catholic Church's supervision? I didn't know that. Do you think the current Pope's apology was enough? There is never enough. Yeah. There is never enough. And the fact that innocent lives, you know, vulnerable lives were lost, there needs to be a better structure <laughs> in place. There needs to be better um, monitoring. There needs to be better systems. Yeah. Okay. Your Holiness, did an angel protect you when you were shot? Ooh, nice. Absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. The guardian angel was Gabriel, Raphael. He says just the, the choir of angels were oh. everywhere. And yeah, so was well, Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I start I started getting this person says I started getting uh, dreams and visions on St. Patrick's Day 2005. It was also when your health deteriorated rapidly and died April the tw the 2nd. I saw in my vision during that time Mary Magdalene. She was holding a candle in front of our Lord's empty tomb. Behind her in the shape of a V were people behind her also holding candles. Are you the gateway for the truth finally about the fact that Jesus was, in fact, married. He says, am I? Am I the gateway? He's not sure how to respond to that. Well, maybe it's just the truth. It, the gateway it, 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 the truth. Um, says, what is the truth? What is the truth? And he says, What is the truth? And Eric is Eric in here going back and forth about revealing something. Um, what is the truth? Wait, could you ask that question again? I'm listening to that. Sure, sure. So this person had this dream. Uh, she saw uh, this was about the time that he, your health was deteriorating. You died, and she, he, or she saw a vision of Mary Magdalene holding a candle in front of Jesus's empty tomb and behind her, the shape of a V, which is like the female vessel probably where people behind her also holding candles. So are you the gateway for the truth? Finally about the fact that Jesus was married to Mary Magdalene. He doesn't, he doesn't own that. He doesn't, okay. he's not, not saying that that's the case he said he doesn't understand the connection all right but he was married according to historians now is that true Do you yeah know? um yes as as we progress as a society more gets revealed and okay. and it <laughs> change and more there is more to come um mm -hmm. He did not believe on earth those stories. Yeah. But he does now. Okay. Now so many my people eyes are open. My eyes are open. My eyes have seen the truth, the truth of the light, is what he said. Nice. So many people joke about having Catholic guilt, myself included. Not me, but this person. What can you tell us about the subject of Catholic guilt? I didn't know that was a thing. Mm. Um Guilt is a useless emotion unless, oh God, yes. unless it provides you the opportunity to change within yourself. Yeah. And carrying around guilt serves no one. No. The reason that guilt is even a thing, he says, is because it's attached to a belief system. The Catholic Church is very good at hammering in its way and he used the word hammering in okay 
hammering in. Was the, the Vatican responsible for the kidnapping and death of Emanuela Orlandi? She was only 15 years old and went missing in 1983. Did the Vatican cover up her, uh, her disappearance? This is where another thing where he's putting his head down. Mm. And he said, I don't have any firsthand knowledge of that. Okay. But I suspect. Okay. Uh, is she dead? Yes. Okay. Um, did the kid there was also, he's also going on to say there was, there were more nefarious accusations around that. Yeah. Did it have anything to do with pedophilia? Yes. Okay. Thank you for that honesty. Uh, were you aware of the pedophilia, the pedophilic acts or rumors um, uh, that were circulating among the church when you were here on earth? He's got um, a stream of tears oh. coming down his face. And I feel like I'm going to cry. Um, yes. Okay. Did you try to do something about it? Not my best. Okay. Did you do anything? No. Why? You have to understand this is anything I say will sound like an excuse. Yeah. But the reality of it is there are, there are people that you answer to. Yeah. It is while well, I carried her on my shoulders because I loved her mm. and I would have done anything to protect her. And I did. Yeah. So you thought the great, the highest good was to protect the entire church. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because if you understand, I believe in forgiveness and redemption. Well, there we go. That's true. What else could I do? Was there any contract involved in, in this whole thing? I mean, why? Why? Were there so many pedophiles in the church? If there were was, oh, so um, many. So he says, if you take the number of priests that there are, that there yeah. were, because the number's shrinking, he says, and you put it in context of how many are in one location, and the magnitude of how horrible it is, it, it makes it look exaggerated. He's saying, I'm not trying to say there weren't a lot. No, no. It's just a right. concentrated number in a, in a group of people. It's going to look huge. And he says, make no mistake. That was the tip of the iceberg. Well, there's pedophilia everywhere, not just the church. It, it really is. And he said, it's far and wide. He said, I never wanted to be the judge of someone's character right I didn't feel it was for me to judge i really believed that it would all get worked out hmm. so do you why do certain priests do this it, it, is it because they can't get married is it because it's a high maybe there's a high preponderance of homosexuals i don't know um again it's all in the context he says um, yeah. yes there there is a He's saying there is a significant amount of homosexuality within the church, but being a homosexual does not make you a pedophile. No. Oh my gosh. No. And so being a homosexual and pedophilia, he says, are two different things. Were, oh. were homosexuals creating pedophiles, pedophilia acts? Absolutely. Were straight priests, are straight priests. He's using the current term, the yeah. current tense, oh, are yeah. straight priests. Yes. So wouldn't it have been better to allow priests to have relationships with adults from either sex? He says this. But then to like, because maybe, maybe if they were allowed that, they wouldn't have had to prey on those who couldn't talk back and, you know, couldn't fight back. Someone who's going to have sex with a child is not going to be satisfied with an adult marriage. Oh, okay. Let's okay. clarify that. All right. Someone who would be homosexual would not be satisfied with an opposite sex partner in an adult marriage. 
And so it's not as easy as to say, do I believe that they should have been able to marry? Absolutely. Were there different um, mm -hmm. sex, if you will, or, um, you know, I can't, I can't hear the word he's saying, um, <laughs> say branches, different uh, rights uh, of, of the church that allow them to marry? Yes, okay. there are. I personally didn't understand the uniformity of it. The lack of uniformity. I'm sorry. Yeah. Do you feel like homosexuality is a sin? I mean, I, I don't. I think love is love is love. But what do you feel from your standpoint where you are? I do not. Okay. Do not there's, a, there's an audience hall in the Vatican. Paul the Sixth audience hall in the shape of a snake or reptile. Why did the Vatican approve of such a building? Is it because the Vatican works with rept reptilians or more because of our real history, which they know about, but don't speak with Anki and Satam, you know, Anki and um, the Anunnaki, Anki and, and uh, Enkil, or whatever, yeah. What do you think about that? So this is, this is what's clearly coming through. Uh, there's some, there's something dark behind that. And he's not, I can't hear what he's saying about it. It's, it, it, it could have been gotten away with because it represented the, the serpent, right? The dark, right. Right. but there, it was a calling card, a telltale sign. Um, how did it get in there? Who were the uh, agreeing powers that put it in there? You need to look at that. That's where you need to go. You need to trace that line back. Well, um, in the Sumerian text, they feel like the snake in the Garden of Eden, Eden was um, Enki, the good Anunnaki who loved mankind, mm -hmm. instead of Enlil, who was who wanted to enslave them. There's something dark about it. Okay. So I don't understand if he means if he means there was darkness in the hearts of the people that chose to put it there. Oh, okay. Um, I can't, I can't discern that. I don't know. I don't oh. know what he's saying. <clears throat> Why is the, what, what's behind the church's reluctance on themes like gay marriage, the use of condoms and women's actively uh, leading church related matters? He says, if you boil it all down, it's control. Yeah. It's manipulation. It's control. It's keeping, it's keeping the regime in order. Mm at all costs. Wow. All right, how do you justify the fact that as a Catholic, I was trapped and held back in a belief system that prevented me from growing spiritually. And after leaving the church, I discovered um, meditation, which amongst other things allowed me to grow to the level that I can channel and now have a personal relationship with Yeshua. So, yeah, a lot of people come to channeling Eric feel like they were, um, oppressed or brainwashed by organized religion i think that's what this person's saying yeah um he sees that he sees that Th there is there 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 is no freedom there is no freedom and it's funny because eric is using the phrase i always use drink the kool-aid drink the kool-aid yeah. drink the kool-aid yeah. but behind drinking the kool-aid the pope is saying there is there was for many and still is a sense of security so yes and i think that organized religion had a very important purpose of taming the barbarians you know teaching people manners and morality and all that stuff so you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. i think right but the human yeah correct he says but the human is the one that took it down the dark path well that's yeah and that's it wasn't god and that's control if you look at the basic premise of Catholicism, and if you believe that Jesus Christ was indicative or representative of our God, you would know that it's all about love and compassion and not destruction. Yeah, of course. But you know, then you have people who said, ooh, cha-ching, cha-ching, I can sell indulgences to these people and you know, tell them they're gonna go to hell if they don't pay up and all that stuff. So yeah, it's... Uh... It's an e easy 
entry into greed and corruption and oppression. And, and he, he's saying very clearly, and, and it's almost like this pains him to say this. It's a business. Yeah. It's, it's a very wealthy business. Okay. Can you tell us how things are going to be in the near future with the Catholic community? Um, there's already a significant shortage of priests. Oh. And he's saying that it is we as we become more of a self-centric, self-centered society, he's using those words. Yeah. Uh, there will be more and more people who won't want to sacrifice. And being a priest comes with tremendous sacrifice. So with that said, you will see women enter the priesthood. Okay. All right. Uh, is it true that there are books in the Vatican? I just have a few more questions that are not revealed to the public. Yes. Wow. Can you name one no. or what it's about? The subject matter? No. Okay. Yes, you can, but you would have to kill me. Does the Vatican have copies of the documents from the Library of Alexandria? Ooh. If they're there, not to my knowledge, I don't know that. So why would I not know that? He's saying, so he doesn't know that to be true. Okay. Do you have any knowledge of documents from Sumerian texts about the Anunnaki as and Sophia and the origins of humans from extraterrestrials? Um, any of that was destroyed. Oh, do you was destroyed? Did you ever believe in extraterrestrials as the DNA contributor to human beings? Not on Earth. Okay, Not what do you Earth. think now? I see possibilities everywhere. Uh, is there any anything you wanted to radically change in the Vatican, but you were not allowed to? I wanted to meet current times, meaning meet the needs of the public in current times mm -hmm. and still maintain tradition and i felt that could have been done that would have been difficult the traditions that we hold on to need to be sh need to be traced back to definitive proof that they were given by jesus to us there needs to be and there will be for the ones that will be kept He's also telling me that there will be traditions in the Catholic Church that will be stripped away, meaning oh. women will soon be able to be priests. You know, say soon, it's all relative, but yeah, I'm sure that maybe there are, but not. Um, and also, he, he he would have he he would now. Listen, he's saying, <laughs> I, I didn't sweep things under the carpet, so to speak. I really thought I was doing what was in the greatest interest of the church. I now know that that did not serve the highest purpose that I, I had intended in my heart. I do believe with all of my heart that microscopically, everyone that chooses to enter and be part of the church needs to be looked at. Yeah. Including current people mm -hmm. in the church. Ooh, nice. Was the Catholic religion designed specifically to control the masses through fear? Maybe it morphed into that, but I, I can't imagine. Yeah, no, 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 no. The, the original conception or inception was not about that. Good. Fear is instilled in man from man. Oh, uh, yeah. Control. All right. Is the consecration real or is it only real if we believe it? I have no idea what that means. I'm sorry. Um, well, is anything real if you don't believe it? Yeah. He's saying what you know, what you perceive as real. In my opinion, he says, from what I experienced and what went through me, I absolutely believe it's real. Okay. Awesome. Were you were what were the secrets of Fatima that were revealed to you by Jacinta, the only shepherd alive by then? Jacinta. Okay. 
the secrets of Fatima. What can we, what? If it's a secret, maybe we don't need to know. Yeah, he's saying, you know, he's he's very silent. He's very thoughtful and introspective. Mm. And he's very clear about what is our business and what is not. Okay. So we don't need to know. No. Okay. I, I'm getting that because he's not coming forth with anything. Fine. When you met Padre Pio as a young priest, he predicted you would be, be Pope one day. Did you share another life with Padre Pio? Um, he says he wants to share this with us. Padre Pio was what you would call a psychic. Oh, a channeler. wow. Yes. Um, I did not serve another life with Padre Pio, but I do now. I was going to ask, do you work? That's the second part of this question. Do you work together in the astro, afterlife on any special projects? And actually what he's showing me is Padre Pio is leading, energetically leading the um, uh, out, the outing, if you will, of the psychic medium community. Oh. In, 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 in all fairness, uh, the Pope is saying, as you know, there are good and there are bad in every yes. place you go. Padre Pio is leading the charge. Okay. So, so Eric's laughing because Eric says, well, is, is he the saint of psychics then? Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> oh my God. Right. We'll anoint him as such. There you Have go. Have you ever had any deep mystical experience you could never reveal when you were on earth? We've got a few more questions. I think there were mystical experiences that I had all the time and, and really revealing them was only a appropriate contextually and what they were relative to the, the mystic experiences I had were unique and private to me. Okay. All right. Uh, when you were young, did you have any glimpse into uh, glimpses into the future where you would become Pope? No, it never crossed my mind that I would be Pope. I always knew that I would serve. Okay. And I didn't know to what capacity, but I knew that I would serve. But I didn't know that I would serve until I was a teenage boy. Wow. Any past lives of years that influenced your life as Pope John the Second? John Paul the Second, sorry. Um, he lived uh, during the discovery when when America was um, discovered during oh. that time. Okay. Um, and he saw a lot of the reform stuff happening and the splitting of, and he actually navigated a lot of that. So he was prepared um, to come in here to fight. For in what purpose. capacity were you? Were you a clergy? He, he was a missionary. Uh, he's using the word missionary, um, the mouthpiece. He says, he, you know, it would be not right to say he was Jesus because he wasn't he was spreading the word of the church um in, in what he believed and so it was only natural for this life to progress to the point that he would then hold the church up this was very important to him um, um uh, uh, he's showing me uh peter the apostle um is yeah, okay. with him right now and what about peter he, he he's with pope the pope right now oh hi peter Peter. Um, what happened when you crossed over any special treatment because you know you're the pope so <laughs> vip uh velvet ropes um, yeah yeah red carpet um he says no i'm a humble man and i was escorted by jesus but who's to say other people aren't okay you know? um he's saying it was uh, it's very similar for everyone the human uh and or, excuse me the soul excuse me i'm sorry the soul takes the journey the same way every other soul takes the journey. Okay. Any message or advice for Pope Francis? I think that's the current Pope, right? I mean, he seems to be kind of a, a very politically oriented. Mm -hmm. Just to say that's good or bad, but any advice for him? Stand true to what you believe in, but don't be so rigid that you can't see the tragedies in front of you. Okay. And, 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 and he's using the word corruption. Okay. Do, do, do you, are you saying that there's corruption in his papacy or he's a person that's going to fight corruption? He, there's, it's around him. It's oh, not corrupted around, around him. 
perpetuated by him. Okay, okay. Oh. But it's it's around him and he may be victim to it. So maybe from your um position in the afterlife you can help with that? Or what what will your work be from the afterlife? I'm working with children. I'm working with oh. ministries. I'm working with um he's also got peter saint peter with him and he's also got um mother Teresa. Oh. and there is a it's like the <laughs> eric says the holy trinity oh boy uh, eric making a joke um mm -hmm. and this is all respectful to the pope i mean we're not you know and he of course um you know he says he's the influence behind uh missionaries and ministries for children um wow. The, the, <clears throat> he's also an energy of force, a guide for the voiceless, oh. which would also include the children. It's beautiful. So final questions. What is your message for humanity? Message, advice, what have you? Carry your own burdens and be nice to each other because you never know someone else's. Exactly. Uh, do you have anything to say about Eric? Uh, so, so he says he's a fine young man, mm. and he says that he is making change more so than he could have ever made on Earth, and he's thanking you for your sacrifice. Mm. Thank you, thank you. And Eric is, you know, Eric's Eric and I'm me and we're funny and we're this, but we have complete reverence and respect for the Pope. And, and we hope that, that showed through, but we're still going to be us. Oh, of course. And I do too. Uh, is there any little known fact that people don't know about you that's kind of fun or quirky? Mm -hmm. That's the last question, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I wore white crew socks all the time. Oh, okay. That's awesome. That's, that goes good with Doc Martens. Exactly. All right. Thank you, Pope John Paul II. I really am I'm so honored by your reverence and honesty and your love of the church and your love of children. So thank you so much for this. I'm humbled to be here. And thank you for all that you're doing to help the world. Thank you. You especially. But also, Veronica Drake, helping the world at veronicadrake.com. She's amazing. Healer, medium, artist. She's wonderful. Check her out, veronicadrake.com. I love you, Veronica. I love you, John, Pope John Paul, and I love you, Eric, so much. And I love all of you watching there. So please hit subscribe, hit the notification button, and share this with your loved ones. Over and out, Eric says. Bye. Bye. Thank you.